Good evening to everyone present here today. We have our product manager Jason D'Souza who would show you how to secure your long term success and protect your capital during this difficult time. Towards the end we would also be having a Q&A session. Over to you Jason. A very warm welcome and a happy Guri Parva to all investors gathered here for today's event. I think the timing of this event cannot get any better. Over the last one year many of the investors have faced volatility in the markets they've actually seen their portfolios jump from one level to another and even fall at the same way so in today's event i'll be showing all strategies to be specific four different strategies on how to de-risk your portfolio in the equity market let me start off the disclaimer and the disclaimer is slightly different today i would want you all to just pay attention to this thing the learnings and insights are for your personal investments don't get confused with this and your existing mojo infinity or your markets mojo model portfolio the idea is to view your investments in totality and not a handful of equities or a single portfolio and lastly equity investments as uh, to market risk performance in the past should not be construed as a guarantee for future returns so let's start off before i push you all straight into strategies let's look at the three different financial phases we have If you approach any different wealth advisor he will actually show you all these three different phases and it's very important for you all to actually understand which phase you are actually fit in okay the accumulation phase the preservation phase and lastly the distribution phase when i talk about the accumulation phase now let me see if you all can actually relate to this okay when i keep talking about these three different phases you all have to understand if you all relate to this particular phase The accumulation phase is the time in your life when you're earning the most of money. Okay, and this is the time you need to plan for your future. The earlier you start, the better off you'll be as obviously compounding plays its role over you. The preservation phase is nothing but after accumulating so much wealth, this is the time you begin to consider your retirement preparations. And lastly, the distribution phase is when retirement is at your doorstep. Okay, and all the savings you've done it's the time when it actually pays off now when you look at these three different phases you should actually you might actually fall into one of them or fall into a mixture of either either two of them but the approach in your accumulation phase in your initial stages of investing could be aggressive you're trying to accumulate more amount of wealth and it's obvious since you're starting off young you would have a longer term when it comes to your horizon of investment When I talk about the preservation phase your approach could be moderate over here your investments will now start transitioning from risky equity classes towards more of debt and gold and your horizon over here is medium term lastly the distribution phase is when retirement as it is at your door step your approach will be conservative okay and your horizon should be more for the shorter period of time now it is possible that you are from a different age group and you don't actually fall in this particular way Now the reason I'm saying is that you might be in your let's say 60s but you're still in your accumulation phase that's because most of your income is coming at that particular period of time okay so don't benchmark this or don't like anchor these two age groups you have to actually understand the reason I'm placing these three different phases you could be in the accumulation phase as i said but depending on your liabilities you may still be conservative okay what i mean by that is that let's say you're in your fresh 30s okay but because you have high number of liabilities or many people depending on your income you might have a conservative approach you need to agree to that okay just because you're in your first 40 ages of life you cannot simply go aggressive you will have to look at your liabilities look at how many people are depending on you and then select your asset classes accordingly okay you cannot just go in the you know in full gear and actually just go aggressive you could be in a distribution phase as i said the end but you could still be aggressive if you have a high income flow okay your focus should be on recognizing the phase you are and then taking your optimal decisions okay don't fit yourself in one particular phase you might be in a mixture of both as i said but recognize yourself understand the amount of risk you can take and then you should accordingly invest in the equity market the major mistake a lot of investors make over here is that you know they don't actually understand how many people are dependent or what's exactly going on and they go full into the equity market or they don't actually take much exposure into equity market let's get that corrected today each strategy i show you in today's webinar i'll be showing you all in the accumulation phase or the distribution or the preservation phase what should be your strategy accordingly okay it won't be a one size fits all 
I agree there are many different investors joining us here today. There could be, you know, investors who are young, investors who are slightly older. So after each strategy, I will show you all that if you're in this particular phase, what should be your call? Okay. Before moving to these strategies, it's a good time to re-examine your actual risk profile. Many investors I met back in June 2020, they told me that they are very aggressive. They want, you know, the extremely high risky small cap stocks, so on and so forth. And once Fed started raising the interest rate and, you know, all the rate hikes happened and the market started being very volatile, everyone starts becoming conservative in nature. Now, it does not work that way. After every, let's say, six months or one year, you should actually reassess your risk profile. You should ask yourself, you know, let's say two different questions. Did the last one year movement concern you? If you look at the last one year indice and today where we are, we are slightly below. Okay, the market has gone nowhere. Many of our investments are currently down. Has this movement concerned you or are you fine with it? This is the real test. Okay, in the last one year, if you are confident, if you are confident yet today, then you could call yourself an aggressive investor. But if it was completely jittery, you're looking at each stock in your portfolio, or you're very worried about your investments, then you'll have to reconsider which risk profile you actually fit in. Were you comfortable with the drawdown you witnessed? A very important question. Drawdown is nothing but the maximum drop you found in your portfolio. Okay, let's say you're investing in the equity market and you know, you had an investment of 10 lakhs and that 10 lakhs came right to seven or six lakhs. Okay, a 30 to 40% drawdown. Were you comfortable with that? Okay, because if you are not comfortable with that, then you'll have to again look at your asset allocation. You might not have to take so much exposure to equity, you know, so that you know, you're not actually wasting a lot of time or you know, spending a lot, stressing a lot on your investments. In the end of the day, you don't need to stress on your investments, you need to be a bit more comfortable with it. There's one thing I want to show you all inside the portfolio tracker of Markets Mojo, which will help you ac assess your current risk profile. Okay, let me take you to the website right now. Okay, and if you go to portfolio, the third option is the portfolio tracker. Okay, in this particular portfolio tracker, I have selected one of these portfolios. Okay, if you can see the portfolio score is currently poor, it's a sample portfolio. But as you scroll below and you click here for a comprehensive seven mojo analysis, the risk dot is something which I want you all to focus on today. This will actually help you understand how risky your entire portfolio is. Is it moving in line with Sensex? Okay, what's the kind of volatility you're facing, so on and so forth. Look at this particular dot. If it's towards red, you would, you know, if it's towards red and you're uncomfortable with the first two questions, you might have to get this red dot to yellow or green. Okay, you might have to drop down the amount of risk you have. Okay, so our webinar will revolve around this particular page as well. And we'll also look at the risk pattern, how we can actually deal with it. When it comes to de-risking your portfolio, understand you're talking about your overall investments. Within your investments, you can talk about across different asset classes. Okay, or you can talk about within the equity class. When I talk about across different asset classes, you'll have to actually understand we have fixed income debt, gold or silver, different commodities, and finally equity, and the risk level increases accordingly. So you can see the arrow over here. When it comes to fixed income, fixed in nature, you're getting your income. Okay, the lowest risk possible followed by gold and then finally equity. These are across your asset classes. Okay, I'm not talking about equity right now. But when I talk about equity over here, I have this particular matrix. I had recently done a webinar on growth versus value stocks. I don't know how many of you have actually attended in it. But for the investors who are new to this particular term, in very simple terms, okay, value stocks in the equity market are nothing but are discounted, you know, are trading at a discounted price. They are available at a cheap and attractive valuation. So they are value stocks. You have to understand if they are available at a cheap and attractive valuation, they can fall lesser. And lastly, growth stocks are nothing which exhibit high growth momentum. If I plot this matrix for you over here, and I want to show you all what is exactly risky, the value stocks in the large cap segment carry lowest amount of risk. Okay, I'll just highlight this over here. If you see, we're talking about large cap stocks, cheap and attractive valuations, these have the lowest amount of risk in your portfolio. Whereas when you look at small, small cap companies with high growth potential, these are the ones which have higher risk. Understand within the equity classes, if you look at your stocks in this particular matrix, it will give you a better understanding in what risk you're carrying in your equity portfolio. And also very important across asset classes. Most of us only focus on this quadrant over your equity. 
we tend to ignore other quadrants because they look less as exciting but you should look across asset classes and within the equity asset class to actually de-risk your overall portfolio now that you've got some understanding okay i have actually run across many concepts the first concept that i run across is your stage of financial planning are you in the accumulation phase okay are you in the preservation phase or the distribution phase which phase you're accordingly in okay i'm not forcing you to fit yourself in one of these phases but get a particular understanding on this okay and finally we need to look across asset classes and also within equity class okay starting off with the strategies the first one the most asked questions should you add gold and silver to your portfolio if yes why and how much our chief investment officer mr sunil damane always says add 10 to 15 percent of your net worth into gold because a pure equity or a pure stock market approach will do well in the bullish markets but if you see the last one or two years the amount of volatility we faced gold would be an excellent hedge towards this thing the reason why i am going to plot a very simple graph for you okay let's review the movement of gold and sensex okay right from 2018 these are two lines running one is the sensex index in blue and towards the wider one is the gold index now let's understand the relationship between the equity market and gold prices okay you can see at many instances when the equity market shows a downward trend there is an increase in gold and commodities if you see here this is one instance when the equity market is going down sensex is falling down but gold starts moving upwards okay there's another trend over here you can see in september 2019 when the equity market is falling down gold starts shooting upwards classic example march 2020 this was during covid you can see how the equity market took a very steep turn downwards but if you have some investment in gold there is some stability to your portfolio okay now once again here if you see here the equity market did well the equity market started going up but gold did not go down it still remains stable at this particular point of time and lastly since we are talking about today you can see how the equity market started falling down over here but once again gold started breaking even and moving upwards okay these this these five or six different instances okay i can also take this chart and show you a 10 year period but these five or six different instances i'm showing you over here helps you stabilize your portfolio okay when your portfolio is actually going down since you have some allocation to gold okay it's providing you a hedge it's providing you some cushion for your portfolio now coming back to our three phases how can you actually invest in your gold okay before that some pros and cons with investing into gold it's not correlated to the equity market okay so if the equity market is falling down there's a higher chance that gold prices might move upwards okay an excellent inflation hedge okay easy to gain exposure versus other asset classes this is something which i like you know when it comes to gold because you can either invest in etfs or gold mutual funds straight forward you don't have to think you know buy gold bars all of that those days are gone simply invest your money into an etf or a gold mutual funds which are the best ones you can find them on the mutual fund section but coming to the cons it's volatile over the short term period in the short term gold prices might fluctuate very high okay and you know as close as the equity market as well so it is volatile over the short term period don't get scared okay if you see over a very long period of horizon the gold prices have tended upwards okay so in a short term you can see the gold movement going up and down but that's fine you have to understand it's a hedge towards your portfolio and the last thing i want to cover over here is this fear based decision making and i've put this point over here is that whenever i moderate events or whenever i come for webinars it's when the equity market is actually moving downwards is when we are rushing to buy gold okay we think now the market is going down so now let's put our money into gold you know we're trying to monkey around over here which won't help us you need to understand that gold should be viewed as a hedge and not as a means to gain capital appreciation for capital appreciation for your money to grow we have equities gold is a cushion okay we can't take some last minute fear based decision making and rush to the gold class okay that would even push the prices higher and that's what always happens view gold as a hedge and not a simple term scale put my money in gold and expect it to double over the years to come for that we have a risky asset class which is equity gold should be viewed as a cushion now how you can invest in gold if you are in these three different phases the accumulation phase you could don't need to have a high exposure to gold you are here for risk in your accumulation phase 
Okay, a short cushion of around zero to five percent is fine. You don't have to actually invest twenty to thirty percent. It's fine to have zero to five percent in gold in this particular phase. Now understand your earning in this particular phase. You're at your peak of your income during your accumulation phase. So zero to five percent gold sounds good. In the preservation phase, when you are nearing towards your retirement, you ha- you would have to start transitioning towards gold faster. Okay, ten percent to gold is a good good benchmark at this particular point of time. And lastly, the distribution phase where you can now invest fifteen percent to gold. You have to understand here that you have to actually fight against volatility and inflation. So fifteen percent is good when you are at the doorstep of your retirement. Okay. Now that I've covered these three different phases, let's move to strategy number two. We understood gold. How does it cushion? We've seen the market move accordingly. So let's keep that aside. Now let's come to stock selection approach. In the current market, if you're looking at investing in a particular stock, how can you recognize whether a stock is a safe bet? Okay, if you have two or three stock ideas, which one is a safe bet? Let me show you all this particular thing over here. When you select new stocks for your portfolio in the current market, you can always review the beta and the volatility of each stock. I've also covered this across a lot of events. I'll spend a minute on that later. In a conservative investment strategy, you can avoid these high beta and highly volatile stocks. Okay. Now, how do you actually recognize which stock has a high beta or you know high volatility? How can you compare? So what I've done is I've taken an example of these two banks over here. Okay. Now these are Mudo stocks. I'm not asking you to buy them straight. But this is a screenshot from the watchlist section. Okay, there are two banks over here. How can you identify which stock is less riskier? Let's go step by step. Okay, the first one is simple: the returns. The returns of both stocks are similar in the one-year period, so that's great. Look at the volatility over here. Now, when I talk about volatility, it's actually nothing but the standard deviation of the stock. Okay, and it's how dispersed the stock is from its mean. Okay, the stock price is moving straight in a line. The mean is straight in one line. How dispersed that stock is, how volatile it is, in that particular one-year period. Again, it's fifty-eight to fifty-nine percent for both of these stocks. But lastly, when you look at the beta, the adjusted beta of the stock, for IDFC First Bank, it's higher than Federal Bank. Now, beta is nothing but the movement of the stock price along with Sensex. Here we benchmark beta with Sensex. It's how. Mo- How volatile the stock is, along with the Sensex movement, for IDFC First Bank it's 1.33, for Federal Bank it's only 1.03. Here you can actually recognize the low beta stocks, which typically experience less volatility in the market. When you are going to pick a stock, just look at these two different ratios. One is the volatility and the beta. They will give you all some understanding and some idea on which stock can be highly volatile. Now your Ready to put in more money in the equity market? You'll have to understand one thing. It's a trade-off between risk and return. Stocks which are highly volatile or have a high beta, they are not bad stocks, but they are risky in nature. With high risk comes high return. So if you're looking at a stock with, you know, lower beta and lower volatility, understand they won't move fast as well. They won't bounce back faster compared to stocks which have a higher beta and volatility. It's a trade-off between risk and return. We normally try to run and catch stocks with low risk and high return. That's great. But if you are looking at a stock with a low beta, understand it will move very close to the market, and it might not give you that, you know, that exponential alpha you are actually chasing. So it's a trade-off. In your three different financial phases, when could you pick up what stocks? Okay. In your accumulation phase, go for the risk. Your year for enjoying the volatility. You can look at small growth companies with high beta. That's fine. Your investment horizon is for the longer term. So if you pick a stock which is risky and you know it's a good quality stock after all, you don't have to worry since you are there in the longer term in your accumulation phase. When you talk about the preservation phase, you can look at medium to low beta based on your risk profile. And lastly, distribution phase. Here you will have to start looking at you know large cap mature companies. You'll have to understand that. In your last stage of your investment, when you're at your doorstep of retirement, you can't actually simply only invest in small cap companies with very high beta. You have to have a good mix of large cap, attractive value based stocks. Okay, they are less volatile in nature and move closely along with the market. So this was the second strategy, which is more of a stock selection approach. We've covered gold, and now we've gone straight to a stock selection approach. 
But what if you don't want to just look at one or two stocks and you want to look at your whole portfolio as a whole? Can you de-risk your entire portfolio by selecting low volatile companies? The answer is straight off yes. This particular grab is from the portfolio tracker I just showed you all. Okay, and I had asked you all to look at this risk card over here. You know, there's a high beta adjuster of 1.11. Now, what is this exactly this 1.11? Just ignore this one over here. It just means that it's 11%. It could move faster than the index or fall 11% more than the index. I have to understand my risk exposure over here. Okay. It's possible that the market moves up by 100%. My portfolio will move up by 111 ideally. Okay. But it's a high beta portfolio over here. Let me take you to the portfolio. If you can see it's high beta adjusted of 1.11 with Sensex. Okay. Higher risk portfolio. You can also go on top and look at this risk column over here and understand what's the beta of all the stocks you hold in your portfolio. You can see this one is 1.21, which is higher. Mastec has a 1.35 beta. Obviously it's a small cap stock and it would move faster in the market. But here I can see Hindustan Aeronautics, which has a 0.84% beta. Okay, so it's movement with the market is slightly different. And even IOCL, the movement with the market is 0.5%. Now you have to understand that this particular stock over here, which has 1.35 Aztec could move faster as well because it has a high beta, but it has high risk involved. How can I drop the risk in my portfolio? How can I de-risk my portfolio over here? You can look at stocks which have high beta and mostly have sell rated. So they won't actually go up and they also have high risk. You could simply exit those particular stocks in your portfolio. And this will drop down the beta in your portfolio. This will improve this red dot. That helps you de-risk your portfolio and your overall investments. Now in this particular portfolio, I identified two stocks with very high beta. One is Everready Industries and Patanjali Foods. Okay, let's eliminate these stocks and then review the beta of the overall portfolio again. So I'll go back. Okay, I'll go back to holdings and I'll just put a sell transaction on these two stocks for now. Okay, I have around 700 quantity of Everready Industries. I'll just sell this particular stock, I'll completely exit from it. Okay, and the last one was Patanjali Foods as well. So I'll put a sell over here. Great, I've exited two stocks in my portfolio, which have a high beta. And now if I go back down and see my Mojo parameter analysis here, you can see the beta has dropped down to one. One, as in it moves along with Sensex. Let me just show it to you over here. Okay, we've got a medium risk, a beta adjustment of one. It's fallen from 1.11 to one, and that's helped me de-risk my portfolio looking at the stocks as a whole. What does this one mean? It will move closely in line with the Sensex index. Okay, it will move very closely in line because the beta is one now, it's moving just in a straight line along with the index. Remember again, now that my beta has dropped, I might not move faster when the market turns back. Okay, because it's moving closely with the index and I'll get returns which are idly closely mimicking the index. So it's a trade off. If you have high beta, if you're up for high risk, it's obvious that you will make higher returns as well, as long as you invest in good quality companies. Now that my beta has fallen down to when I don't want investors to come back and tell me, okay, Jason, now I've de-risked my portfolio, but utna returns nahi mil rahe, wo alpha generate nahi ho rahe. It's obvious. Okay, because the risk comes down and you will have a lower return potential as well. This is at a portfolio level. Okay. Now moving on, if you want to understand which phase falls where over here, a high beta portfolio of about 1.10 is justified in your accumulation phase. During your preservation phase, your beta should start moving closer to one. Okay, because you're at the end of your retirement cycle, your portfolio cannot now run at this speed. Okay, you will face higher volatility. So you can slowly transition below to one. And lastly, in your distribution phase, it could be one or lower than one. Now it, it again depends if you're ready to take a risk over here, you can go for a higher beta, even 1.2 would work. But this is just an idea, a sample, a benchmark to understand how your beta should fall as you move from one phase to another to de-risk your portfolio accordingly. Okay. We've done with these three different strategies. Let's move to the next one, which is tactical allocation from equity to debt. Okay. Let me give you all this particular ex example over here to make you understand. 
Ajay invested some 10 lakhs into the equity market in 2015 for his son's education with a long term goal. Okay, back in 2015, so around eight to nine years before, he's invested and his son's require his son requires that money right here in 2023. Now he has two simple options. Okay, let's make it much more simple over here. You can invest either only in equity because he has a long term horizon. Okay, he's saying he needs to invest it for around eight to ten years, so it's fine. He can invest in the equity market, or he can invest in equity and transition towards debt in the end. Now, what exactly does this mean? Let me give you another example. He started of investing in 2015, okay, with this 10 lakhs at 2014 year end, and now he starts investing in the equity market. Now, this is Sensex returns over here to give you an example on how Ajay's 10 lakhs has moved in the market. If you see the first year actually fell down, and the second year, even though it went up by two percent, it's still below his 10 lakhs amount. Now you'll have to understand that the returns are non-linear; the graph can move in any direction, okay? But still, then if you see towards the end when he comes close to 2020, 2021, as the Sensex starts correcting from this level, his investments again start dropping down. Okay, so he collected around 21, 22 lakhs, but because of the last one year movement, his Investments fell down by one lakh. Now you have to understand that if he required twenty-two lakhs for his son's education, he has to postpone that goal because his investments now have dropped down. Okay, you can see the amount of risk over here. In the last two three years of his leg, anything could happen, and now he has to arrange some money over here because the value of the portfolio has fallen down. But when I talk about transitioning towards debt, you are actually going to a safer fixed income class. If you see here, I put liquid funds over here. I'm not suggesting all to go in a very you know long duration funds because they are also they can be affected by interest rate risks. But keeping that aside, if he transitioned towards debt in the last two years of his investment, you can see his capital is then protected. Okay, from twenty one point eighteen lakhs. Okay, he's invested now in the debt. He's transitioned towards it, and it's moved slowly. But there is one thing. There is some surety in his capital towards the end. He has protected his capital rather than simply investing in the equity market. Now you can understand over here that even minus five percent is not a big thing. A minus ten percent is also possible in the equity market. Anything can happen. A minus ten percent would straight get his twenty one lakhs down to nineteen eighteen lakhs. Instead, in the end of his investment leg, he can transition towards debt and safeguard his overall capital. the equity market returns are non linear short term movements can impact your capital and you'll have to understand something if you are collecting money for a particular goal towards the end moment anything can happen the last 3 years of your journey can be you know very volatile or move downwards and that could delay your goal okay it won't work out in all cases well to avoid uncertainty that's when you can transition from equity to debt and ajay is not transitioning his entire portfolio from equity to debt but a portion of his equity portfolio which he has kept for his son's education for that particular portion he is transitioning from equity to debt don't get this wrong i'm not asking you to transition your entire portfolio from equity to debt and then from back to debt to equity no if you've invested for a particular goal and you are actually following that goal based strategy towards the end you can then transition okay now here we can't actually apply our you know the accumulation preservation and distribution phases we can't apply our three financial phases over here because this is a goal based event i'm looking at a part of my portfolio and i'm only looking at that chunk and i'm shifting it to debt okay not my entire portfolio as a whole in the last 24 months of your equity journey the market will provide you some opportunity to exit and book profits okay he's invested from 2014 ajay has invested 10 lakhs okay but in the last one or two years or even the last 3 years you will get some opportunity the equity market will move in some direction you will have some opportunity to book profits and then move to debt okay now don't simply wait for that you can withdraw that amount either in one shot and put it into debt or you can gradually let's say break in three you know three or four different tranches and then move slowly towards debt but please understand one thing don't just stay in the market in the equity market learn to tackle greed over here because these goal based events cannot be postponed if it's a son's education or someone's marriage you would have to give money at that particular point of time just staying in equity thinking that you know what there's another bull run coming that's fine you can always remove that money and keep it aside and play safe over here learn to tackle greed in such situations for example let's say towards the end you're actually expecting sensex to give some 20 30% returns over here 
Okay, and that doesn't happen. Actually, falls by twenty percent. That's when you'll be locked in, and you will have to delay your goals. Okay, I spoke about four different strategies over here, but there's one bonus particular strategy I want to actually talk about. Okay, look at this particular graph over here. It's as simple as it can get. Higher risk does it translate to higher return? You need to understand large cap, mid cap, small cap, and then you are moving towards the smallest company, which are micro cap. There will be some risk as we move this ladder. I think that's very simple. I don't have to spend much time for our investors over here. You might be getting this, you know, very easily. But as you move higher across the different classes in the micro cap, the smallest category, your risk will also be high. But you can rejig your market cap allocation, which is obvious, to reduce the total risk of your investments. Okay, so talking about a market cap support. You can review the market cap allocation of your equity investments in one shot. It's very simple. Let me take you all to the website and show you all how you can find this particular thing. To review your equity market cap allocation or your diversification, simply click on diversification over here. And not only market cap, you can also view it across sectors and so on and so forth. But here you can see 61% of my portfolio is allocated to large cap stocks, 22% to mid cap, 17% to small cap. This is where you can actually understand how much risk your portfolio has across different market cap classes. Okay, so you can visit the Mojo portfolio tracker, seven dot analysis, diversification, and then go straight to market cap. Now understand one particular thing over here. Define your strategy. We understood the three different financial phases. Okay, we understood our risk profile. Now that you actually seen the market move in a volatile manner, you know where you stand. You might be a moderately aggressive. Or a moderately conservative, you know, poor, uh, poor investor, so on and so forth. Ensure that you follow some market cap limits. Now set these limits up. What happens is that when you invest in large, mid, and small cap companies, the small cap companies might move up faster. It might increase your allocation in the portfolio, and over a period of time, your portfolio might become risky. But set some limits for yourself. I'll provide these sample allocation limits. Okay, as an aggressive investor, I can take thirty percent exposure to small and micro caps. This exposure should drop down for you as you become conservative in nature. Don't simply invest a higher proportion, and when you're a conservative investor, it won't help you. Okay, it will cause you to be jittery. It will cause you to panic in the equity market. But these are some sample allocation limits. Don't follow them to the point. Now it's possible that this thirty percent might become thirty-five. If you are able to stomach it, it's fine. Okay, you don't simply need to always cut this thirty-five and go back to thirty. You can always keep. You know, a uh, range. You know, let's say from twenty-five to thirty-five percent over here for mid cap. Okay, does not need to be, you know, fixed on thirty. It can always be a range over here. Now that's not the problem. This market cap support and this large, mid, small cap. A lot of investors already understand it. But the one thing I want to actually explain to you all today is that is your selection actually good in the equity market? Now, what I mean by this is that we have a lot of overconfidence when it comes to investment in equity. Okay, we think that if we can pick some good stocks, we can pick them across different market cap classes. But that's not always possible. It could be possible that you're not good at picking mid cap companies, or it could be possible that you're good at picking small cap, but all the large cap companies you pick up don't actually perform well. In that case, you can always, you know, look at this particular thing. Okay, your choice of market cap can be uh, may be correct, but the stocks you choose inside that market cap must also be right. Okay, you might say that okay, now small cap will outperform, but within small cap, are you picking the right stocks? To understand if your selection is good, you can always review the returns you made across the different market caps. Okay, let me take you to the portfolio tracker, and now let's go to returns. Okay, you can click this dot and come over your street. And as you move to the right, here I can see the return contribution by the market cap. Okay, I can see in large cap what's the return I've made. In mid cap, what's the return I've made? Spend some time and actually look at this particular thing. It will give you some idea if you are good in picking large, mid, or small cap companies. So if you see this particular sample portfolio, I have not been that great picking small cap stocks. I've also not been that great picking mid cap stocks. You can look at the total return. The only return contribution I had is in large cap stocks, so it's possible that I'm picking good large cap companies, but in the mid and small cap segment, I'm kindly failing. Now, admit that particular mistake. We don't have to be really egoistic over here and say, you know what, I'll handle my entire portfolio. 
you can always select a good fund manager for your mid or your large or your small cap allocations now since i've large cap has contributed 7.5% okay this is how you actually get it my market cap performance over the last two years for small and mid cap has been poor i'm admitting it over here okay i'm not boasting if i'm not done well in a particular market cap category i'm admitting it over here and then i'm giving the responsibility to a better fund manager what i mean by that is let's say i have to invest around 10 lakhs okay i'm following the moderate approach i showed you all this slide a while ago large cap 5 lakhs mid cap 3 lakhs small and micro cap some 2 lakhs if i'm not good in picking mid and small cap companies why can't i just invest this 3 lakh okay straight into a better mutual fund approach let me look at the top rated mutual funds and put that money into the mid cap fund understand these fund managers are actually spending time in roving all the mid and small caps and they are investing for you you can invest the 2 lakh over your straight and go into this particular mutual fund okay these are just the top rated mutual funds for an example but my point here is that now start looking in depth and see across which market caps you're doing well if you're not doing well in a particular category it's better you shift because it's your money after all it's not your ego which comes in place it's mostly your money and you're here to make some returns in the market if you're not doing well in a particular segment look at a particular mutual fund or any particular pms house which invests well in that mid small or large cap segment okay now we've spoken about these four to five different strategies over here we also understood which kind of financial phase we fit in our journey till now the first step is simply understand your wealth creation journey okay are you in the accumulation phase are you taking enough risk in that phase the second step is nothing but you reassess your risk profile every 6 months or one year okay it can be possible that you start off conservative in the equity market and slowly towards after a few years come in and you understand volatility you can turn aggressive so you have to shift your risk profile accordingly you can't just simply say that i'm conservative and i'll always remain you might be aggressive go back to conservative moderate but reassess your risk profile talk back to yourself and actually understand that you know am i fine with this particular risk profile going forward and lastly you can always apply these strategies to de-risk your portfolio across asset classes when you're looking at gold okay you can look at across asset classes invest in gold within stocks you can check the beta or the volatility and understand which stocks are riskier i also showed you all how to look at risk at an entire portfolio level okay how to understand the beta of your entire portfolio as a whole we also looked at how you can transition from equity to debt if you are following a gold based investing you have to understand towards the later stages of your investment when you transition towards debt you are safer and lastly the bonus slide was the market cap allocation look at how you made money across different market caps okay and the ones you are not doing good you can simply give that risk portion to a better fund manager now a lot of learnings today i know this can get a bit confusing the video will be av available later for you all to review it accordingly but before i end the particular event we have an offer of 26 triple nine for 2 years plus 3 months you can get free mutual fund transactions 3 months free because you are attending this webinar and a massive 33% discount okay and thanks for your time with that i'll open the floor for the qna session meta we can pick up any questions on this particular topic the first question for today is from mr dasari uh dear jason can we have any screener for finding stocks during such kind of stormy times yeah i think a very good question i have not covered this part and i think i should have added in my presentation as well finding stocks during st stormy time screen up great question let me simply take out to the website if you could share my screen we can move to make your own screener over here i think it's a very good point i can you know add it in the next particular webinar as well So inside the screener section, let me just clear all filters over here. Okay, and you could look at valuation factor over here. Okay, these are some of the ratios. But to make it simple, you can go to the valuation dot, and on the valuation dot, you can select actually very attractive or attractive companies. Now, what happens over here is that when you select very attractive and attractive companies, okay, since their price are not trading at a premium, these are stocks which are currently at a lower rate. Okay, and they won't fall much in this particular period. Okay, so I'm selecting very attractive and attractive stocks over here. I can run the analysis over here as well. Okay, now if you look at these particular companies, there are many small and micro caps. So what I can do is I can go to size again, and ignore the small and the micro cap companies. 
So let me put a filter of looking at, let's say, 1000 crores and above. Or let's say, let's say 5000 crores and above. Okay, so here I have some mid and large cap companies with very attractive and attractive valuation. Okay, other fundamental factors which you can apply, you know, ideally, you should look at companies which are giving good dividend yield in this particular time. You have to understand dividend yield is something which is like more of a constant income. When the market is very volatile, and you know, it's moving in a very fast range, it could be possible that if you have stocks which are giving you constant income, you can add them in your portfolio. Because the market won't promise you capital appreciation and movement, but it could promise you some dividend yield. So I can add this particular filter as well in my portfolio. You can look at PE and PE ratios as well, but I'll personally not look at it currently. Okay, lastly, let's just put the returns to understand how fast these stocks have fallen, let's say in the one year period, or in the three year period. Okay, and one more good, I mean, indicator to look over here is the technical grades. The reason I'm saying for that is that even in this market, if a company is bullish and mildly bullish, that's quite a good thing. So you see, as soon as I put the bullish filter from 119 stocks, it drops to only 12 because very few companies are moving at this pace. Okay, so let me just keep it at bullish for now. Here we're looking at mid cap companies and large cap companies, attractive valuation. So they are value driven stocks. Okay, technically bullish. So they are moving upwards in even in these volatile times. And if you see the returns in one year, I can see all of them are green. I think only ONGC is in red, but most of the stocks over here have done very well over the last one year period. Okay, now I think within this also, you can dive in deeper and see if the stock is a high risk, low risk potential accordingly. Okay, so I'll just click is, is Oil India for you. So you can see it's high risk, medium return. So you can be a bit, you know, you can take a step back from this particular stock, but you can also look at within this stock, is the stock for you by understanding the risk. So this is medium risk and high return. Okay, you can see the volatility of the stock where I've explained this concept. So you can go about these particular screeners, add the valuation parameter, add the dividend yield, so on and so forth, and then kind of select stocks which are less volatile. The next question is from Mr. Frank. Uh, hello, Jason, excellent style for presentation. Could you please show me how I can find 20 small cap fundamentally strong stocks? I want to invest 20 lakhs in these 20 companies. Okay. So the first thing which scares me a bit is that 20 lakhs in small cap companies, your first criteria should be liquidity. The reason I'm saying is that when you're investing 20 lakhs in a small cap stock in one shot, and there isn't enough liquidity in that particular stock, then you might not actually move the stock along with the market. So liquidity should be one criteria. Understand that if you're investing in 20 lakhs, can that particular stock handle that volatility? Mostly most of the stocks should, but if it's a very small and micro cap stocks, a one short 20 lakh investment would be very risky. Now, if I'm still on the screen, if you could just share my screen. Okay. And let's go to investment ideas. Okay. I'll click on small cap companies over here. Now these are a good base to start off your investment selection in small cap companies. You have to understand these companies have high quality, okay, good positive financial trend and also an attractive valuation. Okay, so in the current phase, these stocks are an attractive valuation. So the downside could be lesser since their valuation is at an attractive range. Okay, you can also add more filters over here, you know, to actually reject this portfolio. So let me go to edit this filter. And I'll just see all the filters currently where you can see they selected the first three dots. The first two dots are over your green and financial trend is also green. And the market cap is limited for to only small cap stocks. You can add more filters within these to actually understand, you know, so one good filter to add when it comes to small cap companies is the shareholding of the company. If these companies, so I'm selecting total institutional holdings. If the institutional holdings are higher in small cap companies, it's a good, it's a good thing for that. Okay, because these companies are not much research, but if an institution are invested, it gives some backing. So let me run the analysis over here. So I'm looking at the institutional holdings. You can always sort them in the descending order. See, DCB Bank has a 52% institution holding, followed by 38% by Gokulda's export, so on and so forth. I can also add FI holdings over here and run the analysis. Yeah, you can see, so GHCL, 25% of the holdings is by FI, so on. Okay. You can add growth factor, but you should understand that these companies already move at a fast rate. So you can add your profit and sales growth factor. But I think a good institutional holding and if the dots are green and good, 
uh, it would give a good starting point to select these small cap companies uh, now it is possible that from these 20 small cap stocks many might not perform many might perform but i think that even if you know if three or four stocks end up being multi baggers even if three or four it's a very high number you would make massive returns in that credit low case the next question is from mr rajesh the rejig of one's portfolio is easier said than done as our emotions do come into play we tend to always have a feeling to hold on to our loss position just a little longer to see if they could turn around how to counter this is it better for a portfolio manager to manage this for us or is there some other way please suggest see it's always better to your a portfolio manager to actually handle your equity investments and i'm not saying that just for you even if i'm investing in the equity market since it's my own money there are some emotions involved in it okay since it's my own money i do get a bit jittery when the market is falling down so on and so forth to answer the latter part of your question it's always good to have a portfolio manager because it's very obvious that he's not looking straight at that particular money and very worried he will take the proper decisions he doesn't have any emotional attachment to that particular money so he will make his proper decisions and he would have lesser human bias or emotions over here your point is very good i mean if you see i'm having this webinar at this particular point of time it's easier said than done the key to actually fighting volatility or de-risking your portfolio is having your asset allocations fixed in place well in time what i mean by that is now we are getting a lot of questions on should we add gold to your portfolio now it's it's a no brainer you should always have 10 to 15% as i said for a you know let's say a conservative investor or at least 5 or 10% of your investments into gold now when you start off today you would have to maintain that exposure all throughout your next investment journey when you invest your 10% into gold today okay and as the equity market moves forward there'll be a particular time when the equity market starts moving down and that's when this 10% gold will help you if you're starting off late that's fine as long as you're learning and you're starting off today it's always a great time okay so even it, i mean it's easier said than done a lot of things like selecting companies with lower risk now it is possible that you'll have to book loss and then move to a lower risk companies okay there isn't a particular time in the market you can realize okay from now the market will fall down i agree with that so these changes can happen gradually you know perfectly doing this is only available on the textbook but if you're aware on how to selecting low low risky or low volatile companies if you know how to drop down the beta of your portfolio okay well in advance you can always do that and you know get it down to a you know a comfortable limit but as you said it's very difficult to do this in you know complete 100% based reality it's kind of a textbook approach but you would have to you know let's say understand that this thing is going to happen and then take the decisions accordingly the next question is from mr pandurang Uh, dear sir i have aggressive model portfolio market is very volatile and now i realize that i am a conservative by nature should i sell off aggressive portfolio and start a conservative portfolio or keeping aggressive portfolio active i should start conservative portfolio thanks sir so um, now what if you let's say you no know, you have two cases over here let's say you sell your aggressive portfolio and invest that into your conservative portfolio and then the market starts doing well your aggressive portfolio is going up your conservative portfolio is slower it's not a good decision to actually sell off your entire holdings and shift it to straight towards conservative approach a better way is actually putting or starting off a new conservative portfolio so now all the new funds you get you can direct it into a conservative portfolio what happens in that case is that you're kind of balancing it out i wouldn't suggest you to go off straight now sell your aggressive portfolio and move to conservative it won't actually help you instead as you said the new money which comes in you can push it into conservative portfolio now uh, hear me out if you invested let's say for an example 1 crore into an aggressive portfolio and you only invest 5 lakhs into conservative portfolio it won't move the needle so you would have to have sizable investments in both okay but don't sell off from one portfolio and move into another you might do it at the wrong time as soon as you do it the aggressive portfolio starts going up and you know you will always look at the rearview mirror so your new investments can now slowly go towards conservative and it should be sizable because if it's a very small amount it won't kind of help you the next question is from mr rajesh jason do we go by the scripts suggested by markets mojo ready made strategies or blindly or do we customize the same to our individual goal or risk profile what will be the right approach always a customized approach i mean um 
the reason i'm doing this particular event is also to make you are aware of when you are investing in the equity market what's the kind of risk you'll have to deal with if you straight off go with our approach and you know just say select all small cap mojo stocks now since they are small cap mojo stocks we have thoroughly studied them and we expect them to go up that's why we added them in our list but can you actually invest in all small cap stocks understand which financial phase you are in understand your risk profile and then invest in the top rated markets mojo good quality stocks See, it's possible that you're a very conservative investor, and you simply go for an aggressive portfolio. It will never balance out. So, going straight forward and picking stocks from Marcus Mojo's Mojo stocks is not a good approach. Rather, you should actually understand where you stand, then pick up few small cap stocks, then pick up few mid cap or few large cap stocks. So, the right approach is first understanding what you want from the equity market. Are you run, are you running a race right now, or are you just jogging or walking? Once you get that clear, that's when you can visit the Mojo stock section and accordingly pick stocks. Check the beta of your portfolio and go forward. The next question is from Mr. Farke. Hello, Jason. How does one access liquidity of a stock by using the screener? Thanks. So currently, we don't have a uh, liquidity in the screener option. I think it's a very good um, suggestion. I'll speak to my team and see if we can implement it. Currently, you can only access liquidity when you go on the stocks page. Uh, for some of the investors who don't know, if you could just simply share my screen, I'll just take you all across quickly. So I'm clicking on the stock over here, Narayan Udalayo. Okay, this is one place where you can find out the BSE and SE combined volume, which is 1.63 lakh. Okay, you can also go to price and um, then find out about the liquidity. Okay, here you can see the volumes, the delivery volumes over here. Okay, so here you can understand that the delivery volumes are increasing, and. Um, so these are two places where you can actually find out, you know, how uh, if there's enough liquidity in this particular stock. So if you're investing, let's say more than 1.63 lakhs, you'll move the market. But if you're investing anywhere, let's say five or ten percent of this particular range, then it's safer to invest. The next question is from Mr. Shamim. Hi, Jason. How to find low risk, high return stocks? So we don't have one filter where you can add low risk and high return. The only way is actually, you know. Um, Going to each particular stock and visiting the stock speed and finding that out. Uh, I'll speak to my team if it's possible. We can add it in the screen now, so you all can select, let's say, low risk, high return, and then go about. The next question is from Mr. Madhusudan. How do you choose good micro cap companies? Uh, very similar. The one I showed uh, the investor a while ago about small cap companies. Um, instead of from thousand to five thousand crores, you can shift the market cap to zero to thousand crores. Now understand the amount of risk involved in these uh, companies. They move very fast compared to you know small, mid, and large cap companies. Micro caps are even more smaller. Again, one point to understand is the institutional holding. If a micro cap company has a good and high institutional holding, it's a very good plus point. Okay, these mutual funds, DIs, and FIs have studied about the companies. That's why they invested in them. Uh, and under micro cap companies, you also also understand the risk. If it's moving in a very fast manner, you might actually get stuck in that stock for a long time. So I think these two three parameters you should actually apply and also apply the dots, good quality, good valuation, and you know good technicals. The next question is from Mr. Ravi. Share your views on ZF Commercial. Okay, I'll just search the particular stock over here. Okay, so Mojo stocks in one month, fourteen days also added as the stock of the month. Currently, it's an eighty four strong buy. Uh, our chief investment officer has picked it after a very detailed rational. Okay. So if you just share my screen, so this was the stock of the month pick for March. If you click on this report, you'll understand why we are exactly asking you to buy the stock. It's been thoroughly studied, and there are a few rationals attached to it. Okay, let's say strong growth prospects it's into the EV area. Uh, if you ask me my personal opinion, I had looked at the financial trend of this this particular stock. Okay, and over let's say from October twenty itself, the results are positive. There are very few red sticks moving downwards. So this is the financial trend each quarter trend, and the price has also moved accordingly. Okay, now many investors might be worried since it's at the peak of the price, but you have to understand the fundamentals are also moving well along for the stock. Okay, one drawback is the expensive valuation, but you have to understand that the company is you know commanding a premium in this particular industry. Okay, with a good quality and let's say a good financial trend, it's a it's a it's a strong buy currently in the comp, uh, you know in our list. It's also a mojo stock. Now since we're talking about risk, let's look at this. It's a low risk high return company. Okay, so that is one 
big plus factor for this particular event over because we are searching for these companies which low risk and high return okay if you see the volatility it's 23.82 sensex is 14.7 okay and these are the returns so if you are someone who cannot actually take a lot of risk but still looking for high return this is a mid cap stock which would actually fit well for your portfolio the last question for today is from mr frank pardon my ignorance i have never invested in gold and i don't know how to invest in gold could you please show me the way how i can thank the, you yeah there are multiple ways uh, i would never suggest anyone to buy physical gold i mean that's a big no there are so sovereign gold bonds but i will show you all some etfs and mutual fund approach so if you just simply search gold you can either use an etf approach i think there are also gold and silver fund of funds over here so an access gold fund but you can simply either invest in an etf or invest in a fund approach okay here you can see the returns is given okay you can evaluate all of them uh with an etf it's very simple you have to just simply go on your demat account and place a trade with a mutual fund you can place a trade directly from your as well so this stock over access gold one for example if you want to invest trade put in the amount over your either follow an sip approach or a one time approach and you can invest in uh, the access gold fund okay so yeah you you can also understand the volatility of this fund along with its peers you can see the returns over here 14% in one year i think um, i think four year 15 16% annualized return is good for an asset class i mean it's uh, quite some good returns so yeah you can always invest over here understand how much you should invest 10% 5% i have already explained that bit So that's it with the Q&A session Jason. Oh thanks a lot. Thanks a lot everyone for attending today's event. I hope I could actually help you all understand how to de-risk, you know, from the stock approach or the portfolio approach. This webinar will be available on the highlights page later for you all to view. And looking forward to seeing you all come for the events in the future. Goodbye and have a great evening. Thank you so much.